You should back it up on your laptop, right? But you don't. Put it in the cloud. Put it, well, wherever. Put it up your arse, I don't care. <laughs> you know? You lose it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we might, we might feel better, we feel okay for a while. But a suppository this big might, um, well, I'm not sure exactly what it would do. But anyway, so you're going to get all this, so, but don't lose it. We used to put them on dog tags, like. They still lost it. Um, so how was the wee one? The wee one from last night. Guys, your boy. Not your boy, my boy. Huh? He's ruthless. You know, I do cry in the seminar. I haven't cried at this seminar. Um, but uh, I've had a, a few good laughs, but I mean, I haven't cried. Yes, he's ruthless. He's arguably, of the, of the, the guys from the Industrial Revolution time, he was allegedly the, uh, the worst. He made uh, all those other guys pale in complexion. And then he got goody two shoes towards the end. And um, as they all do. What else, what else about uh, Andrew? And it's just coincidental. By the way, I almost bought Skibo Castle about 20 years ago. Uh, it was for sale it was before they made it into a, uh, a luxury kind of country club and before they did all that. And it was for sale for 7 million pounds. And the main reason I, I didn't, because this estate came with one uh, indentured slave employee, one, one guy. And uh, he lived to be in his late 90s. But they had over 100 that come with the estate. In other words, you got to support them, you got to feed them, you got to uh, uh, give them a hospital and all that. Over 100. And even though my one guy here, uh, Mr. Anderson, was a nice old man, uh, I couldn't think of a hundred of them, taking care of them and making sure they get, get, get to school and, and bringing in, the, uh, because uh, a school teacher to, to teach at the local school there, I just, so I, I passed on it. And then uh, DeSavery, I believe Peter bought it one time and somebody else bought it and, and then they turned it into a luxurious place. Uh, it had a rundown 18-hole golf course. It had 105 bedrooms, 105 bedrooms. And I thought, well, shit, all the, all the money we've spent just on 20 bedrooms, I mean, I just, I, I could just see the numbers, just see the numbers. But, um, and he's just, you know, from the down the road. So uh, what else about, other than being ruthless, what else about? Uh, he spotted Andrew? opportunities and went straight for it. Mm -hmm. At first it was the telco, then it was the railroads, and from the railroads he looked at the steel, so then he, and he just went straight for it. Correct. Didn't spreadsheet it to death. Uh, didn't help his buddy, uh, was it Fisk? Chris. Chris. No, no, it's not Scott. Chris was his kind of assassin. No, 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 but who was the guy that you didn't help? Scott. 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 Left, him, left him in the wilderness, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he the guy that helped him, right? Mm -hmm. rich. Yep. Just left him. Didn't leave him for dead exactly because he still had money, but. Uh, and that, helping, that, ha that happens quite often because they weigh um, the. Their, I want to help this guy, but what am I going to have to give up? to help him, uh, how much damage, am I going to have collateral damage, and they go through all this, and then, and the lawyers always tell you, don't help him. The lawyers that were advising him, I'm sure, although he didn't blame it on the lawyers, will always tell you, don't help him. He's a big boy, he can take care of himself. I don't know how many times my lawyers have told me that. He's a big boy, but I do it anyway. Uh, the, um, what else about uh, Mr. Carnegie? And remember, the model that we're doing is his model. He didn't call it QLA and he didn't call it uh, motivated, uh, one moving part, motivated seller, but it was all the same. He was the biggest in the industry out of the whole steel industry. Bigger than Great Britain. Correct. He Correct. was real dirty when he sent those letters about the competing railroad or the competing steel mill. Yeah. Homogeny, was it? Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't have homogeny. What the hell does that mean? It's just bullshit. It's just bullshit. It's bullshit. It's like consortium. It's like consortium. You know, it's an amorphous. You don't know what it is. You know? 
but uh, yeah, and um, but uh, in Scotland, especially from south, from here south, you can't find anybody that has any bad thing to say about them. But I mean, every other town's got a library, a school uh, that um, he gave money, he donated money to um, his little house, uh, his little wee house is uh, like a museum now um, where he was born. And in those days, the guys were born in their houses. Uh, um, but he was a uh, relentless, unswerving, ruthless um, businessman. And the, uh, he cut to the chase, uh, had self-confidence, and he wasn't an alpha male. It, it's hard to be an alpha male when you're only two foot eight, but anyway. The, um, he wasn't any of those things like Steel Bomber, who's a big guy. But he epitomizes the things that we've talked about, the characteristics of a majority of the, um, or not a majority, because the majority aren't, uh, uh, um, but a majority of the guys that we've talked about are like the traits that he portrays, or he, uh, he held high. And then towards the end of his life, and then, uh, you don't hardly read anything about the one daughter he had. Uh, he was 51 when he married. I think she was 30 something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the uh, anything else? He invested 275 dollars, and I paid him 5,000 a year. Yeah, that sounds like a Ty Lopez deal. <laughs> um, the um, yeah, 5,000 a year was a horrendous amount of money then. Horrendous amount of money, and. Um, if I remember correctly, didn't he make uh, seven dollars a week? His, his railroad salary was five percent of his annual income from investments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he carried on till the turn of the century, the nineteenth century, um, and then uh, the last uh, fifteen, twenty years of his life, he um, was busy trying to give away his money and, and pay for all the heartache he caused. Not dissimilar to the guys today. Uh, and he was in the era of um, some real, real big magnets of industry. And when the, the, the names and, uh, or the definitions uh, were written about um, uh, the magnets of that era, and you can see, you can just see him in that particular uh, movie uh, uh, didn't depict it as much as some of the others from the Discovery and History Channel, where the four or five of those guys are sitting in a room smoking cigars, and you know deciding how they're going to cut up the country. And um, the, the interesting thing about in the railroads, and I don't think it was mentioned in that film, is that when the East and West met, the railroads uh, in a, roughly in the center of the United States, they had different gauges. For whatever reason, that one was using 10 gauge and one was using 14 gauge, and so when they got together, and they drove that golden spike, there were two different gauges, and so they had to they had to um, resurrect um, the uh, rip up a lot of the uh, railroad because the gauges didn't match. You would think the engineers would have had the same gauge, and that's why I was uh, I was just reading an email uh, this morning. Remember, I told you that uh, banks make mistakes on these papers. And uh, this one of, one of you has written uh, a, uh, a mercy fuck uh, email. What do I do now? Because the bank made a mistake, and now they're short some almost three hundred thousand dollars. And the deal's supposed to close uh, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. And that means his board didn't check the numbers because there's pl plenty of numerous people on his board. They should have checked the numbers. But they didn't. And so now he's scrambling around. Somebody had their hand up. Yes, sir. Carnegie was actually raised to kind of have an um, empathy for the working man. And at one point, he did actually decide that he was going to kind of throw it all in and become more altruistic and so on. Yeah, but that didn't last too long. Yeah, because he read the works of Spencer, and Spencer sort of said, no, no, it's an evolutionary thing. You're evolutionarily superior to these, these other people, and that's why you're richer, and it's okay to tread on them because of this, and, and then he kind of went down that road. And Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and these other guys thought, thought when Steve was alive, 
and even currently the guys that are uh, currently the super wealthy, many of them, I won't say all of them, but many of them think they're superior and they're a superior race and they deserve to be rich and uh, the rest of the world deserves to be cannon fodder. Yes. And it's very easy to slip into that, um, that uh, mode when you have uh, everything or almost everything you, you think you want. It's, it's not a matter of what you need because we can get along with you know one suit and two shirts and etc. cetera. It's, it's what you want, not what you need. You don't need five cars and three planes and six houses and, um, and I had all that stuff at one time until Sally and I downsized. Um, but um, it's fun, especially if you're poor, um, and not all these guys started poor, many of them did, uh, to uh, add to uh, arrows to your quiver. And arrow is another plane. Um, uh, what can you do, possibly do with 200 suits, you know? Um, and uh, what can you possibly do with, uh, you know, 150 pair of shoes? Uh, what, what, you, what can you, well, what can you possibly do with uh, uh, 100 uh, pairs of underwear? You know, and, uh, but you get them. And it's not just because people give you stuff. Nobody gives me underwear at Christmas or any of that. But I mean, it's because you just, you continue to, you buy stuff. And you just continue to buy. And then at some point, you sit back and say, you know, you run out of space on the walls to put paintings. You run out of a drawer space to put shirts, socks, and underwear. You run out of closet space to put your suits, sports coats. You finally, you run out of space. And then... Um, you run out of room in your garage for your cars. Yeah, well, yeah, well that, that too. But I mean, you also... Buy um, new space. Pardon? Buy new well, space. Well, yeah, but then you, after you have four or five houses, and then, the, uh, and then, then you start... You know, I told you, in Monte Carlo, Sally and I... Uh, discovered that we only went um, one time the year before or last before we got rid of our place there and then one year a whole year we didn't go and so you know why do you have it and, and, my, and I'm, I'm not complaining but Monte Carlo is expensive and the um, and it's uh, like living in a fishbowl and uh, you really don't want the tourists to come for the uh, racing because this the town gets all fucked up with all the tourists and so then you finally wake up one day and say that uh, then you do a reverse and you start getting rid of all the stuff. And it always takes longer to get rid of the stuff than it did to accumulate it. It, it almost always takes longer. Anything else about um, Mr. Uh, Carnegie? Yeah. He compared work to war. Yes, he did. Now, you've heard that. Your uh, action plan is going to be a war plan because we are at war. Fortunately, uh, the, um, you're significantly more equipped to win these battles than um, the majority of everybody else out there, other than other people that are following QLA. There's no comparison. It's like the famous line um, in uh, the movie uh, uh, with uh, Kevin Costner movie about Al Capone, just like a guinea to bring a knife to a gunfight. Uh, you know, everybody else has got um, knives and you have guns, you have howitzers, uh, you have artillery. There's no comparison. And you are able to do this with less, really less equipment because the, um, when you're not bringing in, uh, for the most part, equity into the transaction and it's only commercial debt, commercial debt tied to um, seller's financing, uh, the deals get done quicker um, and, uh, and they can be changed at the last minute and you don't have to go back to the uh, credit committee and get an underwriting. Uh, it's just you and the seller. And it's a lot, lot uh, simpler. And even those deals can fall apart. And, but once you understand the vulnerable points or the pressure points of a transaction uh, using a QLA, it's much easier to figure out what may go wrong uh, before it goes wrong and, um, and then be able to close the deal. Anything else about, uh, yes, sir. yes, ma'am. Um, he had self-doubts before, and he, he would say this affirmation as, like, uh, all is well and upward and onward, and that uh, self-doubt vanished. Yeah, I mean, everybody on the planet um, doubts. The difference is the high-performance people don't share their doubts. I told you uh, a couple of days ago, 
when, when you come home and, uh, you know, uh, how was it at the office? What did you do? You know, that's just rhetoric uh, that some, somebody wrote in a, a pamphlet one time. Um, everything's great. Couldn't be better. This is what I would answer and what I did answer. Couldn't be better. Everything's great. How was your day? Terrific. How was your day? How, how, how do you look at the future? Better than terrific. Because words, words matter. And if you allow yourself, even if you had a shitty day, if you allow yourself to share that doubt with your kids, with your significant other, your parent, um, the, uh, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, I, I, I don't know of any day um, that I was depressed. If I was depressed, I sure as fuck never knew it. Um, the, um, and s some people that are really suffer from depression, uh, manic depression, they have their highs are high and their lows are low. The, um, and, um, but the outlet, your outlet, will be your affirmations. Um, and uh, maybe that's why uh, Napoleon Hill uh, said to uh, say affirmations 10 times a day. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe it's from input that he got from uh, uh, Mr. Carnegie when he uh, started to write that book, you know, these many decades ago. Anything else about, yes? So he sold his business for $480 million, but he could have got another 100 million. Correct. Well, he, and, and, and the story had is he could have got even a lot more than that extra $100 million. Yeah. Um, but uh, that $480 million made him the richest guy on the planet. Because he never asked. Correct. Correct. He, he didn't. He wanted out. He wanted out. Motivated seller. Yeah, that's exactly right. A motivated seller. And um, at, at some juncture, um, you went out. You went out. Uh, and most of the guys that, that are getting out or have gotten out turn to uh, philanthropy. They turn to philanthropy, giving their money away, trying to do uh, good. And, um, and of course, some of them don't. Some of them just stay, you know, in the saddle until they drop dead. Um, but um, that's a, it's a good choice. It's, 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 a, it's not a nice choice. I don't like the word nice. But it's, it's a great choice to have. You know, you either keep, go to the whip and continue to generate uh, uh, generational wealth, uh, create generational wealth, or you uh, pack it in or semi-pack it in. Um, Right now, I'm at two-thirds pro bono. Two-thirds of the stuff I do is for free. One-third of the stuff I do uh, isn't. The one-third, um, the seminars that I do, that's part of my one-third, but the mentor program, which is free. Uh, and, uh, but uh, at some juncture, you know, I may be, you know, instead of two-thirds, one-thirds, I may be 80-20 or 90-10. But that's a choice you can make, and it's normally based on your health. My health is still super, other than my arthritis that I have. And please, I don't need any remedies, guys. Don't send me any witchcraft shit about, you know, that they can fix my arthritis, okay? I appreciate the effort, but don't, okay? P pretend you did, but don't, okay? Uh, but other than my arthritis, uh, I'm in superb health. And the, uh, so I can continue to work. Uh, and um, Brian Rose fully expects me to continue to do this until I'm in my 80s. I'm not sure, sure I'll do that, but uh, it'll depend. But health is fickle. The older you get, even if you're healthy, when shit goes wrong when you get older, it really goes wrong. And so even though my heart is sound and all that other stuff, the, uh, but I, I have no uh, intention of uh, getting ill. Okay, YouTube, thank you.